we will be talking about start, stop, and continue methodology of change. Self-awareness or awareness is the first step, as one of my good friends and fellow coach, Ariel Kopeck, talks about. She's a mindset coach. She always says that awareness is the first step. And now what do we do with that information is the next step. And, and so with the book, what's interesting to me is, and the question I ask people is, what stands out? And once I recognize what stands out with people, what resonates with people, what changes they've made that really dials in to me how to format uh, a workshop, right? If I'm going to do a 30-minute workshop on a book that takes the average person 90 minutes to read, what's the good stuff? Where do I need to go deeper? What do I need to explain further? And so I use feedback from the audience, this audience, and anyone that's read the book to really develop this workshop. So today, let's talk about start, stop, continue methodology of change. The reason why this works is because of the triple D effect, data-driven decisions. Often, as humans, what we end up doing is we make a decision, and then we find information that supports our decision. Or we see other people make a decision, and we go, yeah, I want that. And so we have this idea of comparison bias or even negativity bias. I don't want to do that, right? I want all the things that are not that, right? We have these bias built in because we want to make the decision before we have the information. I talk about in the book, the OODA loop, O-D-A, OODA loop, which is observe, orient, decide, and then act. Very successful methodology that was developed during the Korean War when it came to fighter pilots and how they could combat when they didn't have as, as a, when they had inferior aircraft in dogfighting. It's where it came out of. And so in order for us to first observe, we got to take a look at ourselves. What are we doing that does and does not serve us? And something as simple as the start, stop, continue methodology of change is it is simple. You can look at all the behaviors, all the activities, all the that you have throughout your day and say, okay, is this serving me? Yes or no. If it's a no, you need to stop doing it. If it's a yes, you need to continue doing it. And what are you doing that you aren't, what that you think you hypothesize might be really good for you to do? What do you daydream about? What do you fantasize about? If you had unlimited time and money and resources, what would you do different? And that's the magical start button when it comes to start, stop, continue methodology of change. So let's talk about where you are today and how this can be beneficial. I was at lunch about two hours ago and a woman said she wants to hire somebody first thing next year. She's a lawyer and she wants to get through a bunch of her workload between now and the end of the year. And there's a natural lull in January. And she said, I want to hire somebody then. And my challenge to her was simple. What are you going to do between now and then to prep yourself? And she goes, I don't know. I just have to mentally prepare for getting rid of my workload because she's a workaholic and she's a perfectionist and she wants to do everything. And it was a very good, healthy conversation. I asked if I could make a recommendation. She said, absolutely. I said, okay, here's what you're going to do. You have a determined goal. You have a SMART goal. We talked about last week about exercise your SMART goal. And when you write it down, you're 42 more, forty-two times more likely, 42% more likely, not 42 times, 42% more likely to complete it. And when you tell somebody, you're 78% more likely to complete it. So I said, write it down. And this is her methodology. She has her SMART goal. And it's hanging out there. I said, find a whiteboard, a visual representation you have to look at every day. I love whiteboards because they're flexible. You, you, they're stagnant, right? It's not like a chicken scratch piece of paper you can bury. It's not like put it in your phone where you can hide it away. No, whiteboard, a visual that you, you, you can't hide from. This is what I told her. I said, you write your goal. Hire someone by January 1st, right? That is right now her BHAG, her big, hairy, audacious goal for her. And now all day, every day. Every time you do a task, when it comes to your business, put it in a bucket. Is this something you want to do more of? She wants to do more business development. She wants to meet more people. She wants to do more networking. Okay, put that into continue. Or maybe there's a networking group she wants to join and she hasn't had time because she's been busy. For people listening, I'm doing air quotes because not having time and being busy are bullshit. Write it down. What do you want to start doing that you haven't done with your business? What do you want to continue doing? What do you need to continue doing? If you're a lawyer, there are certain things you need to do. You are the person that produces the income. You are the widget. You are the thing. In the six buckets of business, the thing, bucket number four, you are that thing. Got it. Most important bucket for her, what do you need to stop doing? 
She estimates that she spends 30% of her time on admin functions that could be delegated down to somebody else. And when you eliminate something in the stop bucket, put it in the stop bucket for now. It can live in the stop bucket. You compartmentalize it. You put it on the board. You're looking at it. And then from there, three things you can do with it. You can delegate it, teach somebody else how to do it, automate it, make it so it goes more efficient with your oversight. Or, and a lot of people don't give themselves permission to do this, you can eliminate it. Stop doing it entirely. And now this is a focus on business. This also applies when it comes to your life. This also applies when it comes to your relationships. Which relationships are fulfilling? Who do you want to spend more time with? Who is not serving you? Who drags you down? Who makes you feel less than you are? Who can you eliminate with your life and it's a net gain? Now let's dig a little deeper. What thoughts do you have that inspire you, get you excited? What thoughts can to push you through your day? And which thoughts, those limiting self beliefs stop you in your tracks? What are you carrying around? What is your baggage, your wounded inner child, the burden, the cross you bear that prevents you from going out and being the person that you are destined to be, the person that you want to be, the person that you want to look up to someday, the hero that you're going to chase, the person that stands in front of God someday and God says, yep, you fucking nailed it. You did all the things you were capable of. What thoughts do you have that stop you? In my own personal experience, I knew I was going to be a business owner. I'm a fourth generation entrepreneur. Grandfather, two great grandfathers were business owners, both my grandfathers. My dad has owned a business for 30 years. Our family is generally unemployable. Between my three siblings and myself, one of us has a job, and all four of us work really hard, and all four of us are successful in our own ways. However, only one of us has a job because we defined our own success when we were born into it. And I did everything except be an entrepreneur. I went and worked for big businesses like Best Buy, Black & Decker, UPS, Waste Management. I worked for small businesses and did concrete work and other work that I knew wasn't mentally stimulating, but it was comfortable. I joined the military and went to Iraq and then went to another tour to Gitmo because it was simple. I could follow the process. And all the while I knew I was running away from what I was destined to do in this world, which was to go out and be an entrepreneur and carve my own path in the world. And I did it because I told myself I wasn't good enough. I convinced myself that I didn't have the money. I convinced myself I didn't have the education. I convinced myself that I needed a business partner. I convinced myself of all these things that did not serve my ultimate goal, which was to start a business. Even to this day, I my, I talked about it last week or the week before, my goal is to do this full time. And every time I tell myself, oh, I'm not good enough, that person's got this, and look what that person's got, right? It doesn't serve me. I need to stop comparing myself to others. I'm not them. I'm not on their journey and they're not on mine. I am guilty of doing it just as everybody else is. The difference is I have the thought in my head and I tell myself, does this serve me? Yes or no. If it's no, that's an opportunity for me to stop doing it. And the more times I catch myself, the less times I start doing it. When it comes to start, stop, continue methodology of change, it's really simple to look at your actions. Those you can put on a whiteboard. Those you can look at. What do I need to delegate? What do I do want to, want to do more of? That's the good stuff, Right. Then you start saying, okay, what are the words I'm using? What words do I need to start, stop, and continue using to me, uh, be, to be the person I want to be? And then once you stop using those words out loud, you stop using those words or start using those words inside of yourself. You start telling yourself, yeah, I got this. I am good enough. I'm not there yet, and this is what I need to do to get there. And this is what happens. You start thinking it. You start saying it, you start writing it, and then eventually you start doing the fucking thing. It is that simple. Start simply by looking at the actions and activities that you are doing, the results you are getting, and reverse engineer it. In my book, the first section is the anti-glossary. From the feedback I've gotten from other people, it is their favorite section. The anti-glossary talks about shit words that do not serve. The first thing we do is we eliminate 12 or 13, 13 words I think it is now, 13 words that do not serve people. Bullshit words like sorry and busy. I'm thinking, I'm talking, I'm trying. No, you're lying. 
people often say this is the most difficult part to stop doing bad behaviors. It's not that difficult. It's the simplest thing. Stop doing something that doesn't serve you. That's a lot simpler than starting something new. It takes no resources to stop doing something. It takes no time or no effort. Even now, three minutes ago, I hid the screen. I remembered I am at my best when I do not screen. So I turned off the screen so I can't see myself because when I see myself on the screen, it gives me this weird, oh, am I saying the right thing? Oh, what are people judging? Oh, who just fell off the call? Oh, what do people want to say? No, I turned off the screen so now I can be me. It's me in the camera, in my office. This is my domain. This is where I'm at my best. This is what I need to continue to do. I need to stop looking at myself on the screen. I need to start owning who I am and where I'm going in this world. And I need to continue to put myself out there because my why is to be so unapologetically myself that others feel the need to be themselves. I'm very intentional. Need, self-actualization. Maslow talks about this, right? Mark Twain talks about it. The two most important days of your life are the day that you are born and the day you figure out why. And here's the beautiful thing about the why. You can say it today and it can change tomorrow and nobody knows it changes until, except for you. You could be wrong and wrong and eventually be right. And I would rather be wrong every day and be right eventually because I made those choices. I took those chances. I put myself out there. This weekend, I was talking to my girlfriend and she, we were talking about this really bad romantic comedy she was watching. It was about a documentary, da, 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 whatever. And she goes, man, that must be tough to, be a, to put a documentary out there and, and show your perspective and wear your heart on your sleeve. I go, I know. I wrote a book. A lot of people have come back to me. They've seen my vulnerabilities in the book. They've questioned me. They now know what's in my head. They now know the way I see the world. They now can attack me on multiple levels. And I want to do more of it. I'm only getting started. I want to dig deeper. I want to have arguments. I want to hear feedback. I want people that have different perspectives than mine because then I can gain a new perspective. That's the power of start, stop, continue methodology of change. When I sat down here today, I did not have an agenda. All my only notes are start, stop, continue. And I put sandwich because that's a great way to also uh, put yourself in there with start, stop, continue methodology of change. Talk about that here in a second. That was it. I know I do my best work. I feel my best when I just go on a tangent. I feel my best when I let it flow. That's what I need to start doing. I need to start letting it flow, letting the audience into my head, into my world, so that they feel the need to be themselves day in and day out for the people that they're surrounded. So I will talk about the sandwich method real quick before we wrap up the show. Sandwich method. When you're first starting, it is going to be uncomfortable. We know this, right? And comfort is the enemy of progress. P.T. Barnum, one of the greatest of his generation in his industry. We still refer to him today because he was a great one. Comfort is the enemy of progress. Get uncomfortable. And here's the word, here's the thing about the sandwich methodology. Often people feel guilt or shame when they want to stop doing something. They want to stop smoking. They want to stop going to Starbucks every morning. They want to stop bullshitting about their weight loss program. Fine. Put that down as a stop. And sandwich it with a start and with a continue. Continue being honest with yourself. Continue questioning the way you see the world. Continue showing gratitude. Continue giving yourself the grace to be better today than when you were yesterday so that tomorrow is that much better. Continue doing all the amazing things you're already doing because the fact you're already doing this methodology means you're willing and able and empowered to grow. Continue doing that. And when you eliminate the thing you want to stop because you know what it is, deep down, you know what you need to stop doing and you give yourself credit, now you've created space in your brain to dream, to hope, to look towards the future and say, with unlimited time, resources is money. What am I capable of? And I talk about the book, should, could, can, will. This is what you should do. This is what you could do. This is with unlimited resources. What could you do? With your limited resources, what can you do? And finally, what will you do? My challenge to you is this, figure out an area of your life that you love and talk about how you're going to continue doing more of it. Find an area of your life that you don't love about yourself, or you're wasting time. Deep down, we all have something. Figure out what you need to do to stop and what are you going to do with all that extra time and energy 
that you've just acquired when you stop doing behaviors that did not serve you. Continue to love yourself. Continue to challenge yourself. And as always, get out there and do the fucking thing.